to go on too much longer. What I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to bring in Mike Robinson. I actually see him at the press box. It's only the second time he's ever done comedy. But uh, he's actually a really, really funny guy. So I'm going to bring on Mike Robinson, all right?
you know, my dad would be there and there'd be an auditorium full of young minds just soaking in knowledge and, and waiting to excel. And he'd say, the world is your oyster. You go out and you make it happen because you can do it, but you probably won't. <laughs> and then there's my mom. She's crazy. Some moms just love to take pictures. Does anybody know what that's like? Anybody got the picture crazy mom? Anybody? Picture crazy grandma? Yeah, okay, that dude right there. All right. It's like, oh, look at here. Let me take a picture. You know? Oh, look, we're having dinner together. Let me take a picture. Four generations of Robinsons, let me take a picture. Baby took a poopy. Let me take a picture. I'm losing my freaking mind. Let me take a picture. Golly. You know? So, uh, uh, how many of how many people here are newlyweds? Anybody? Any newlyweds in the room? Yeah? yeah. Did you raise your hand? Well, congratulations. Yeah. Right on. So, uh, um, dude, have you pooped in front of her yet? <laughs> when I first got married, man, I was terrified that my wife would hear me pooping. It was no, it was a phobia. No joke. Okay? I would like, I turn on the shower, like crank up the music. I did not want her, if she knew that I pooped, the magic would be gone. I couldn't let it happen. You know? And she knew it. Okay? And my wife, she is mischievous. Okay? She knew that I didn't want her to poop or hear me poop. So she would hold her ear to the door. <laughs> and just make enough noise so that I would know she's on the other side of the door. So I'd be kind of like really hoping that it would come out slow, you know, the lower it may come out, the less noise it makes. But always, no matter what, you're going to hear, you're going to get the plop, you know? And so, once the poop came, that's my mom. Once you hear the plump, right? She's on the other side of the door screaming, Pooper! I'm not a pooper! Yeah, you are. I can hear it! I'm so excited! But we've been married for four years, and four years of marriage does that. It does change you a little bit, because now I just don't care, you know? She'll, uh, I'll be, you know, in the, in the bathroom doing my business, right? And, uh, and she'll walk into the bathroom, and she'll say, uh, uh, I'm going to the store. Is there anything that you want me to pick up? And I'll say, uh, it looks like we can use a little bit of corn. <laughs> Maybe some privacy. <laughs> you know? And it's funny, like, you know, it, wives expect things from their husbands. One thing that they expect is that their husband is always there whenever they need him, just at their beck and call. So it's like, if I'm in the bathroom and she needs me to kill a spider, you know, or something, it's like she doesn't understand why I would not be ready to kill the spider for her and instead of taking care of my own business. So it's like, Mike, what are you doing in there? Well, come here and I'll show you. <laughs> Crazy. That's, that's my mom. Here. She gets high. She gets she gets up there in like the octave. So when she does that, just make sure to like hide your glass. If you have any drinks in it, definitely like find something plastic to cover your body. Um, because they'll shatter. But uh okay, so now I'm a parent, right? Hey, any anybody here have kids? Like little little kids. Little little kids, yeah. They are fun. They're a lot of fun. Um, for the moms. <laughs> so, uh, I found out very early on that me and my wife have two very, very different uh, styles of parenting um, that kind of clash. For my wife, it's all about nurture and care and love and, you know, cuddle and all this. And for me, it's contained, you know? <laughs> Holy crap! I don't know how it was when I was a kid, what I had to play with if there was no electronics back then, you know? My kids love cords. Anything that you plug into a wall, they're after it. You know, so we're at, you know, at Toys R Us and, and we're looking for things and she's looking at blocks, things to 
create, you know, a stronger mind, flashcards, toys that make noises and, and light up and stuff, and I'm wondering where the leashes are. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, stick that thing to the center of the living room and just, just enough flat so that they can't touch anything on the outside, right? Big pile of toys around the stage. They'll be okay. It's fine. It's not, that's not child endangerment, okay? I think it's safer. And that's why men have to work. Okay? Men have to work. Women, I'm not a sexist. You can work if you want. You can if you choose work. But men have no choice. We have to get out of the house for at least eight hours a day. Because if the women were the only people in the house working, they'd come home, the man would be playing Xbox, and the kids would be like this, you know? Ugh, you know? <laughs> and that's my brilliant idea for Pitchman. Anybody watch Pitchman? I'm going to go to Billy Mays. Well, if he was alive, I'd go to Billy Mays. I'd say, Billy, check it out. Piggy straight jacket. <laughs> That's it, man. That's your million dollar maker. We can do it for, like, you know, five different designs. You know, Dora the Explorer, Lightning McQueen, Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> that would sell so much. That would make so much money. And it'd be yours for only two easy payments of 1995. <laughs> and if you act now, We'll throw in baby nursery padlocks for free. <laughs> when you order, just tell us whether you want the pink or the blue. <laughs> so, uh, I forgot my next joke. <laughs> Guess what? I just remembered. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, growing up, my parents were really good parents. Um, uh, my parents really instilled in me uh, the value of, of waiting until you have sex. Um, and, uh, and so I tried to remain a virgin until I was married. Uh, I will readily admit that I didn't make it all the way. <laughs> but I got kind of close, okay? But uh, uh, the funny thing about growing up uh, trying to stay a virgin is that you cannot go to a prom or a dance or formal, or anything like this. Because the rest of the guys in high school that are getting on a, laid on a regular basis, you know, they can sit there and they can dance with their girl and everything's going okay, right? For us, for us who are trying to, you know, keep it, uh, it our dances look a little bit more like this. <laughs> you know, and she's wondering, what's going on? And I'm like, this is the virgin dance, baby. <laughs> this is how we do it. You know, you don't want me to get any closer than this. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, because um, this whole time I was trying so hard, you know, it's not like I didn't like the idea of having sex. Um, and, and although mentally I was trying to keep it back, my penis didn't share the same conviction. <laughs> you know, my penis would be looking up at me like, Dude! What is your problem? And I'd be like, man, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to stay a virgin until marriage. You're telling me, hey, bro, can't you be a normal teenager for months? Okay, normal teenagers, one out of three of them have STDs nowadays. Oh my gosh. Double back me, bro! <laughs> You know, but really, I, I had kind of a deeper motivation. You know, uh, like I said, I'm a Christian, so that basically means I was terrified of Jesus. Uh, I was scared. I really was for a long time. I knew I was going to have to stand before God on judgment someday, and He'd be like, "My Robinson, why didn't you stay a murderer, stay a virgin until marriage?" And I'd say, "Jesus, my penis told me that only nerds die as virgins." And he'd say, are you calling me a nerd? <laughs> so, uh, uh, have you seen your citizens in the house? Sinners? Really? No, it's okay to raise your hands. You guys are adorable. <laughs> you are adorable. Oh my gosh. I just, let me take a picture. <laughs> oh, my ears wrinkled. They're so cute. Oh man, I worked with seniors for, for a 
14 years down in Columbus, Georgia. And Columbus is right next to Fort Benning. Fort Benning is an army installation. Uh, our army installation, uh, infantry, the uh, home of the infantry. Any infantry men in here? No? Yeah, right here. I was infantry. And uh, that's why I lived in Columbus, Georgia. And after the infantry, I got a job uh, teaching a senior exercise class for women. <laughs> I don't know why they uh, chose me. Maybe it was because of the boots. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I could have taught three of them, according to my brother. <laughs> but uh, the scariest thing about teaching this exercise class was the pelvic thrust. <laughs> you know? Pelvic thrust, ladies. If you were an 80-year-old woman who has not been touched since the Holocaust, <laughs> what would you do with the guy doing this in your face? <laughs> Probably wouldn't even matter what he looked like. <laughs> Shake it, daddy. <laughs> All right. Uh, you probably couldn't handle this, Grandma. The one that had a buffalo nickel. <laughs> and there is this lady who, during the pelvic dress exercise, would prepare herself for me. I don't know why, but she would like unbutton her her collar just a little bit, fan it out, apply lipstick, and I'd be like, "Lady, it's, it's just an exercise." She'd say. Come over here and we'll make it a workout. <laughs> I had to get out of that job before I got late. <laughs> and uh, the, the scary thing about senior citizens is uh, is just how persistent they are. Um, now, I'm not talking like 55 plus. I'm talking about like, you know, the 80-year-olds up. Um, I mean, not to be insensitive, there's things that you just can't do. Take up the hat with grace. What if Sean Connery still played James Bond? It would not be... I dare you to Google Sean Connery, age 88, right now. You would not be woo-hoo. That guy probably... I mean, he's not like... Uh, he's not James Bond's dad anymore, you know? He's, he's like uh, Ed McMahon's dad, you know? This guy's old, you know? So he'd be there... You know, nurse, nurse, can you kick this Russian guy's ass for me? I do it myself, but I might break my hip climbing out of bed. You know, I'd be that, I'd be in that movie. I'd be the guy going to the Russian saying, I will kill James Bond for you. And Boris would be like, how do you plan on killing the world's greatest spy? the <laughs> And I'd say simply, hide his meds. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with uh, with five things that I've learned in the last uh, two years of, of being a parent. Five things that I never thought I would ever have to say it, to anybody in my life. Okay? Number one, no bud, we do not touch our peepees with candy. <laughs> Number two, I don't care how much it hurts, I am not kissing your butt. <laughs> Number three, what are you doing with grandma's teeth? <laughs> Number four, Get mommy's underwear out of your mouth. <laughs> Even I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> and the fifth one. Mommy was just giving daddy a piggyback right? <laughs> now. I just got to tell you, the look on my son's face. which was better than the look that I gave him when that door swung open. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thanks so much for being my uh, Robinson.